Hey everyone, in this video I am going to excite this alternator without the help of any battery or capacitor bank or DC generator. So to self excite uh, this alternator without any of those additional equipments, what I have to do is I have to couple the rotating field to the armature of this alternator. So guys, this one is a 100 volts DC motor and this is a 12 volts alternator 600 VA and both of them are mechanically connected with the help of this pulley and belt system okay so guys this is an electric bike battery charger and it can produce up to 59 volts and a current of 2.7 amperes so which is uh, around 60 volts so I'm going to feed uh, the DC motor that is going to run the alternator with this DC source okay so guys these red and blue wires are connected to the brushes of the rotor of this alternator so I have connected these uh, wires from the brushes directly to the output terminals of this alternator so what this will do is when I will feed electricity to these brushes to excite its rotor and rotate its shaft the shaft will induce EMF in the armature of this alternator and the armature will start generating current and that generated current will start a cycle of feeding electricity to these brushes again and so the cycle will continue so even if I will remove uh, the feeding power supply to these brushes still the alternator will continue to produce electricity because of self excitation so the first step will be for a moment I will feed electricity to these terminals the red and the blue which are connected to the brushes which will in turn excite the rotor of this alternator and that rotor will induce EMF in the armature and then armature will generate current which will then again feed electricity back to the brushes and then brushes will again excite the rotor and then the cycle will keep on going so after the motor gets into that cycle we can remove the connected energy source to these brushes and this alternator will still continue to produce electricity and this process will be self excitation so okay let's get on with it these four crocodile clips are actually connecting the armature wires to this rectifier and voltage regulator since I removed this voltage regulator and I didn't solder these wires back to the voltage regulator so I am using these crocodile clips to connect these wires to this voltage regulator okay this is a 5 volts mobile charger with which I am going to feed electricity to the brushes which in turn is going to excite the rotor of this alternator and after the alternator gets self excited I will remove the supply which is this mobile charger and the alternator will still continue to generate electricity like a permanent magnet generator okay so I have turned on the terminals you can see that it is indicating power full charging ok so first I am going to connect the mobile charger terminals to excite the rotor of this alternator ok so how we are going to do that this long screw is the positive terminal and this is the red wire and red wire is for positive so I am going to connect this red wire here ok and since the armature winding and the brushes are connected in parallel so so this red wire is feeding electricity to this red wire of the rotor of brushes and this is the black wire the black is for the negative which is the ground wire and the entire body of alternator is always negative so we can connect it anywhere we can connect this black wire anywhere on this body ok so yeah the black wire is connected and the red wire is connected so the field is now excited now I am going to connect a multimeter to indicate the generated voltage by this alternator ok so the positive will go here Okay, so first I am going to start this DC motor. 
so this contains 60 volts DC supply that I'm going to feed this motor okay first wire is there now the second wire Okay, so it seems that the bike charger is not meant for operating this DC motor. So I have to come, come up with something else. Now since the e-bike charger did not work, I am going to use these two laptop chargers and I am going to connect them in series. This one is a 20 volts and this one is 15 volts. So together they are going to make uh, around 35 volts and uh, and I'm going to feed that voltage to the DC motor which in turn is going to rotate the shaft of the alternator okay okay so I'm going to connect the wires to the DC motor so all the terminals are connected uh, so this way I am feeding it 35 volts DC so now I am going to plug in the power supply and you should see the DC motor alternator system start okay so the system has started but it is slow I am going to increase the speed by plugging this one too you can see that the speed has increased and now I am going to remove the excitation terminal of the mobile charger so yeah I have removed it now let's measure the voltage generated by this alternator after we have disconnected the mobile charger that was exciting the rotor of this alternator so as I said that entire body of the alternator is the negative so I am going to touch this terminal to the body and you should see the you should see some voltage reflected and it will not be 12 volts since uh, I am feeding this DC motor only 35 volts and it has to operate at 100 volts so let's see how much voltage it is producing so yeah it is 4.84 like this but yes it is self excited it is generating electricity without any mobile charger connected and the voltage is shooting sometimes okay So as you saw that I removed the terminals of the mobile charger and they are right here and that alternator is operating and I will show you the generated voltage again just for a surety. Okay. You can see that it is still generating voltage. Now some practical demonstration with this 12 volts motorcycle bulb. Yeah, so it is generating electricity and it's completely self-excited. So this is how the self-excitation system of an alternator is going to work. And of course, if I could have been able to supply this DC motor with its rated voltage that was 100 volts, this alternator would be producing around 14.48 volts that is required for charging your car batteries and all but the system actually cleared my point that we can self excite an alternator without a power bank or 
an additional battery or an additional DC generator attached to the alternator to excite its field. Okay. So I will show you the operating view from the back. Look, no other connections are provided. The entire system is like this. Only connection is to the DC motor that is connected only through the belt to the pulley of this alternator. And let me show you the generated voltage again with the help of the multimeter. Okay. Body of the alternator. Yeah, I can also touch it to the vice. Yeah, entire vice is also excited with the negative polarity. So yeah, it is generating electricity without its field being excited. So guys, that would be all about the video. Thank you so much for watching it. If you like my video, please hit like and don't forget to share and subscribe for the upcoming future videos. Thank you.